we have a lot of work to do today. A lot of notes to cover. I also wanna to talk to you about the meeting, uh, video, not meeting, sorry, the video assignments based on the meetings and contacts that you will have to complete at the end of the semester. I know people are wondering what to expect um, or what, to, what I'm looking for when they are putting that assignment together. So I wanna discuss that. And that should take us to the end of the meeting. I also have some interactive activities planned. So we definitely need more students to join us. Hopefully they are on their way. I see that we have Helga. Let me check my participants list. Helga, uh, Felicia, Natasha, and Tanishka. So welcome. I'm gonna unmute Tanishka. I'm not sure what happens, but every time I mute you, you unmute your mic or something that you do unmutes the microphone. Are you joined on your cell phone? Tanishka? Sorry, I just had to unmute it. I join on the tablet, but my mic is usually unmuted until I'm, you know, I answer in. It's usually muted, you mean? No, it keeps yeah. things happening that makes it go, um, that makes it unmute. And I'm not sure what, because we hear a lot of background noise sometimes. And oh. I unmuted several times. I'm not sure if it was a cell phone, I would have said, if you try to send a WhatsApp message or something, it'll unmute, but I don't know. Oh. Anyway, I'm going to mute you now, but of course you can unmute yourself if you have a question. Just be mindful of it. Continue to check to see if you okay. can unmute it. Um, and I haven't noticed quite yet. Okay. I'm going to take attendance later. I want to pull up some of the notes for this evening's class. If you've been following the syllabus, our focus is on the parts of a meeting tonight. Um, I spent about two hours cleaning my computer, deleting temporary files, adjusting my settings to optimize performance because this laptop was slow and I didn't know why. We had some tech technological issues last night. I hope fast class, I hope that none of that happens and we can get through the lesson without interruption. Okay, so as I said, if you've been following the syllabus, the focus tonight is on the, the primary part of a meeting. And as working professionals, meetings should already be a, a common element of our work routines. So we are quite familiar with them. Um, we've attended many meetings. In order to conduct an effective meeting though, we have to understand exactly what a meeting is and why a meeting might be needed. So we need to have a clear purpose in mind. And it may sound obvious, but we're gonna begin with a, a definition of what a meeting is. It's a bringing together of individuals around some common purpose. So there needs to be some mutual interest and they all want to join to accomplish a particular objective. And that is usually how a meeting is born. So it usually consists of some discussion under the control of a leader or leaders depending on the nature of the meeting. There are some key terms, as the definition might be familiar to us, there are also some key terms that might be quite familiar. We may hear the term quorum quite often. This refers to the minimum number of members uh, of an assembly or a society, the minimum number of people that must be present for a meeting and the proceedings of that meeting to be valid. That's what we mean when we talk about a quorum. Now, not all meetings require a quorum. The business meetings that you attend may not be so formal, but generally in a formal meeting, when a vote is passed or important decisions have to be made in large organizations, a motion is presented. A motion or a proposal is put before a meeting for a discussion or a decision. If that motion is passed, then it becomes a resolution. So quorum refers to the minimum number of people. The motion is the proposal being considered. If the motion is passed, it becomes a resolution and resolutions are binding. These are all informal meetings. And I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not saying informal. 
They are in F O R M A L. They happen in formal meetings. So resolutions are binding um, and generally will be reflected in the minutes of the meeting. Um, formal meetings may follow particular rules. So you may, for instance, if you refer to Roger's rules um, of meeting procedures, you might see something like all motions, comments, um, debate should be directed to the chair, remarks must be courteous. There are um, rules determining how meeting participants should govern themselves. Um, deportment in a meeting. Discussions must be limited to the merits um, of the topic or lack of merits of the topic. Motions should come before a debate. Uh, we cannot begin to debate an issue until a member has made a motion. Um, if you've ever attended a union meeting um, or observed any of the parliamentary meetings, um, then that is the kind of formal structure that or set order of business that they follow. There is an agenda. All meetings are governed by that agenda. Um, the agenda has to first be approved. Um, the agenda is amended. There is a, a motion passed to, uh, there's a motion uh, or proposal put forth to adopt the agenda and then that motion is passed. Um, not all meetings are this formal though. Uh, the business meetings that we attend and engage in may not follow this set structure. And so we're gonna spend some time talking about the things that happen in business meetings, um, organizational meetings to, to um, devise a procedure or to problem solve. And we're gonna talk about the key components and the constituents of those kinds of meetings. First thing I want you to do, let me think, let me check my participants unless I heard the doorbell going off several times. Okay, great. So we have a full class now. Welcome those of you who just joined us. I want you to think about the answers to the following two questions. The first is when was the last meeting you attended? And the second is what made that meeting productive or unproductive? So think about the last meeting that you attended and think about what made that a productive or unproductive meeting. I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to structure your responses because I wanna hear from you um, and to see what your experience is like. I have a meeting that's scheduled for tomorrow and I'll be honest, it's a department meeting and I'm thinking, oh, another meeting again. It's a part of our work routine um, in almost any fair uh, of, industry or what career we, we follow or what career we have path we've chosen. But what was the last meeting you attended? Is it only me that has meetings three and four and five times a week? I had a meeting today. Is that? This is Bernique. Bernique, you had a meeting today. Yeah. Would you say it was productive or unproductive? I would say that it, it was productive. Um, initially, I had the same feeling as you, where you was like, oh, not, not another meeting, because okay, I, I, get had, out of this meeting. Mm -hmm, I had already put in my head to work through my lunch hour and leave at four o'clock, but the meeting started at four. <laughs> and this so, is what happened. Yeah, but the, the meeting, I'm glad I stayed because um, in that meeting, they they incorporated you know a little r and r's i don't know if you're familiar with that reward and recognitions where we um thank each other for helping us throughout the day or something that somebody did good we highlighted it and then we also was made aware of a new product and services that we're gonna be offering to our clients so i would say yeah that it was productive awesome so tell me where you you work again Renee. i work at rbc at rbc okay awesome um so you've been in the class while we've been bad mouth and RBC, <laughs> but, I, but I have zero interest. Yeah. Um, so that was an example of a productive meeting. Good. Anybody else? And Renee had something very, very interesting. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. She said the meeting incorporated some reward and recognition. So meetings serve different purposes, right? And savvy yeah. employers know that if they can affirm their employees, remember we were talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, how do you structure your work environment 
how do you create a work environment in such a way that it is both productive and affirming to your employees? So that's a good strategy. Um, somebody else wanted to offer? I had a um, meeting. Okay, go um, ahead. I had a meeting last week. Um, actually, I was the one that called the meeting. Who's this, um, Tanika? Helga. Helga. Yes. So I had called the meeting um, for our department head to go over the financial, um, our financial goals for mm -hmm. the second year and, and see what areas that we were lacking in, why did we lack in those areas, the areas that we gained, like what was our strengths, weaknesses, and how can we learn from this year? Mm -hmm. What can we learn from this year to go into next year? And it was not productive at all, McKay. You said it, it was, was not productive? It was not productive at all. Um, I guess when I called the meeting, I don't know if I caught them off guard okay. by calling the meeting. And then I was the only one really asking questions. And it started to, I just started to get a feeling um, that, you know, maybe you should be quiet uh -huh. because you're the only one pressuring department heads. Right. Um, as far as accident, what is the strategy? What do you guys right. going to do next year? We fell short in this area. And right. then I realized that all the questions were, they were only coming from me. And uh -huh. I said, you know what? I don't want to be, you know, labeled as a troublemaker or someone that's trying to start something, even though it was no bad intentions. I really wanted to see uh -huh. what our goals are, what the, uh -huh. what the company has in mind for next year. So uh -huh. I had to stop talking. So we didn't get anything accomplished. And then everyone was upset with me because they felt like the meeting was a waste of time and they felt like I wasted their time by calling the meeting. How much advance notice did you give them before you called the meeting? I had asked my manager because she had sent out an email just showing a chart of our financial gains and losses mm -hmm. and she couldn't really give an explanation. And I had asked her, is there anyone that can give a detailed explanation as to what we're looking at, make sense mm -hmm. out of it? So mm -hmm. she sent, she said, would you like to have a meeting with the department head so that they can explain it? And I said, yes. Mm -hmm. So she called out a meeting and she gave them a week's notice. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until the following week, which was yesterday, that we had this meeting. But it seems as if, you know, nobody was prepared. Do you think it's because the, and there, there are different things that we're going to talk about tonight, how to make your meeting most productive. Do you think it was, a morale issue? Do you think people felt like I have too much work to do for this? Like, I'll be honest, my meeting tomorrow is a monthly department meeting. And I feel like we have been discussing the same thing since I joined UB. And when it becomes a situation where the same problems and issues are constantly being addressed, but nothing seems to be done about them, then the meeting, this monthly meeting, becomes more of a waste of time than anything. Because I'm thinking about the ADSs I have to mark and the lesson plans I have to come up with and the student meetings, the students who asked to meet with me because we're nearing the end of the semester and I cannot accommodate them because I have this meeting. So when you have competing priorities like that, and it seems as though the results of the meeting are never, or the action steps are never clarified, um, and there isn't a clear plan uh, for where we go after this meeting, people then tend to feel like, okay, I don't sound like this to me. Or people, the people in this meeting don't have enough to do. I have too much work to do. <laughs> but, and you will meet resistance if it is in that way. And then I also find that if it's not, I don't know what your role is in um, the organization, Helga, but uh -huh. people tend to regard meetings called by certain people as more important. And even if it is a waste of their time in their own mind, they don't project that. They at least want to come and seem prepared. So if a VP or someone high up calls a meeting, then, or a COO or someone, then everyone, or CEO, everyone is, a, is, a, is in attendance, everyone's paying attention. Um, but if there are, um, persons under them, persons whose titles that they don't deem to be as um, important as them. When those meetings are called, then some people are like, okay, I don't talk to this. I don't want to. 
So I don't know, we'll, we'll talk more about the things that contribute to a meeting. Um, and we see where we might go wrong, how we do things right um, from now on. Anybody else would like to share? I'm sure, I, I'm sorry Helga had that experience. <laughs> We've all been there, Helga. We've <laughs> all been there where we, we, we wonder, what's the point of this? Um, anybody else? Yes, um, good afternoon, everyone. I, I, I've been on vacation for two weeks so far. Um, the week before I left, uh, we, we were in a meeting. Um, and my office, everyone from this pandemic started, we were required to be in office because- Oh, you at Scotia, yeah. right? at Scotia. Mm -hmm. So what happened is they ended up splitting us into teams uh, just in case one team were to go down. We did have a backup team. We were still working every day. So we're banking hours, but we were working from different locations trying to keep mm -hmm. everything separate. So, so what happens around. is... Okay. Right. So what happened is... And basically for social distances as well. Mm -hmm. So the week when I left, it, it's been so much, uh, whenever somebody has to quarantine, they call a meeting so that the general, I guess the general unit knows what's going on with somewhere. Uh -huh. Just in case maybe you was, uh, you stopped by the spring at home or whatever it is so that you could come forward and say okay yes I had contact with this person and and then also too so if uh the workload now has to be taken mm -hmm. up so you're mm -hmm. aware of what's going on mm -hmm. there has been so much meetings about this um co like every other week there's somebody that's you know, so every time you hear a meeting now, you get this whole, oh my God, who's, who, who quarantined and now? Yeah. Do you, you think know? that's the best way to handle it? An entire meeting involving how many people? Uh, our unit consists of like 20 something people. Can that be handled in a letter? Um, I don't know if a letter is, is as effective because what they do is they be basically conference call. Okay. Um, so like I said, cause we are in different, like different branches. Okay. So what happens is like, not, yeah, the meeting it's, been, been, it, it's been so much like it. So the week before I left, we, they called a meeting. So we was like, Oh my God, who in here? Who, who's the person who is now quarantining? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as, but as it happens, somebody had gotten a promotion and they was leaving the unit mm -hmm. and they wanted to recognize it officially and what's not so that was like a little good it was a good change okay from the usual you know anxiety uh, you feel yes so it is yeah. it is quite uh we've been well i, I do i want to say fortunate i'll tell you something has happened when we first began online that first semester i thought i was gonna lose my mind because for some reason Teaching online is far, far, far more difficult than teaching face-to-face. -face. And in the very first semester we did it, I didn't quite know what the, for some reason was. Uh, now I have a better understanding. All I knew in that first semester was I went to work on Thursday because we have a four day work week in my department. And we have one planning day, which is Friday. So I went to work on Thursday, did my last class, and then we got a message sometime on Sunday that we're moving to remote operations. And we were, ex we, we were expected to be prepared for online classes on Monday. Now, UB had a system in place because some classes were already being offered online prior to COVID. So we already had an LMS, which is a learning management system where students involved in online learning, asynchronous classes would log on. So the um the the infrastructure was already in place not all of us though were trained to teach online and so i go to my moodle shell and i'm thinking okay you know i'm i'm reasonably intelligent i'll figure this out 
Uh, apparently not. It's like, it, like you need real training. It's almost as though when you build a class on an online platform, you are doing some programming yourself. There is back office functionality and you know people set this shell up for you, but you have to uh, enter the material. And I'll tell you, Moodle is so specific and sensitive. It is, it is a very useful tool, but I had the experience of trying to figure out my grade. Like students, there's a component of Moodle where students uh, can access their grades throughout the semester so that every point they know what their average is, which grades have been recorded for them and what their average is during the semester. I kid you not, for a solid week, I was up until 2 a.m. trying to figure out why I've entered, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'm an English teacher, right? English and communications. I have had a math tutor all my life. So math is not my strong suit. And I'm like, okay, I entered my formulas correctly. What is the problem? Why are my students not seeing their final grade? Every night from about 7 p.m. till 2 a.m., I'm deleting my grade book, starting again, entering the formulas and trying to figure out what's wrong. And I'm not ashamed to say more than once or twice, I'm doing this with tears in my eyes because of pure frustration. I don't know what's wrong. Finally, through going online, I understand that I have touched one button, one button that says, and it's, it's not something that you see immediately when you go to Moodle, it's like buried in a menu that says, do not show the outcome of students' grades if some elements of the semester are hidden. And I was like, oh my goodness, I spent a whole week dealing with this. I had to unclick the button and miraculously, everything I wanted to see was, was visible. But I shared that story to say, that simple thing took me one week. This was a steep learning curve that we were all forced to make. And so we've been told most recently, and I asked you if perhaps a letter would have been more effective because that's how UB communicates with us because we are in various locations. Some of my colleagues are in their home countries in India and parts of Europe and are teaching remotely, right? So we were informed that we will likely be online in the spring again, or that admin is going to recommend to, act to the academic senate that we are online again. And, I, and immediately I get ahead, immediately, because it's a lot, a lot, a lot of work and a steep adjustment. Um, so when you talk about the anxiety with anything related to COVID, we get, um, we don't get updates about who is potentially exposed but um, we get notices that a particular office is closed um, until X date. And we're left to um, kind of figure out what happened. And they contact people individually uh, working in that office and ask them to do kind of contact tracing. Um, but I know what you mean about the anxiety. Uh, it has been a difficult, a difficult transition. And so I don't know what's gonna come out of this meeting tomorrow. Uh, I reviewed the agenda, but there are always things that come up and uh, we have a system in place at UB where you have to nominate someone to fill in for you. So if you, God forbid, got COVID, so let's say you teach four classes, which is a normal load. For each of your four classes, you should have identified uh, and contacted a faculty member in your department who is willing to cover that class for you for the duration of your illness. Um, so we have some contingency plans in place, but um, there's a steep, steep, steep learning curve. All right, so those of you who shared your meeting, your meeting experiences, thank you very much. I think we all can agree that in order for a meeting to be productive and successful, it has to be well-planned. The purpose has to be clear and the participants have to be engaged. And so when Helga shared her experience, she said, I felt like I was talking to myself. Well, I was, I was basically uh, the one, only one sharing in this meeting. And so her participants weren't engaged. And at the end of the meeting, people left feeling resentful toward her because they felt like the meeting wasted their time. Um, let's 
talk a bit about the different reasons we hold a meeting and the kinds of meetings we might hold uh, and the appropriate format. So as I said earlier, generally we're planning when we, we call a meeting or we're providing information or we need to solidify some commitments or agreements or we want to solicit engagement or involvement from participants or we need to solve a problem or it may be a training meeting. Uh, there may be some errors that continue to come up and we call a meeting to get to the root of the problem and to find out how to minimize these area, errors. And so there are many reasons why we call a meeting depending on the purpose, the format of that meeting might change. So in a more traditional meeting format, you have the meeting leader, somebody who uh, manages the proceedings and the format is pretty structured, right? Some meetings may be more interactive where there's no real person in a leadership role, but people attending the meeting are sharing. So everyone has a kind of stake in the outcome and everyone is, is equally responsible for the group's success. And maybe have, how good this is the kind of meeting you had in mind, but it turned into a meeting where you were more the leader um, than an interactive meeting where people were sharing uh, and, and contributing ideas. And then you have more instructional meetings, kind of like lecture style meetings, which is what I do, which is what a lot of professors do, where you expect people at the meeting to absorb information or absorb material. Um, and then once the information has been presented, you have a kind of discussion period um, where you expand and clarify ideas. Even in instructional meetings though, or lecture style meetings, there has to be something to break the monotony. Like I'm very conscious of the fact that attention spans are shortening and it's difficult for students to sit and listen for 30 minutes or 40 minutes straight. So what you do, you invite people to share or you, you pause for questions during the instructional meeting as opposed to just talking for an hour, an hour and a half, and then at the end of it, leaving questions, right? Some of you have to do at the end of the semester reconciliation meetings where there is a leader who is a kind of mediator um, between two attendees um, or looking to solicit opinions from one attendee related to a problem. And the, the focus of that meeting, the videos that you will submit to me is some sort of reconciliation or resolution uh, at the end of the meeting. One of the key things or key points I wanna stress and I want you to make note of, holding a meeting involves writing. It involves writing before, during, and after the event. So it is a communication act. Um, and the level of planning and detail that goes into these steps determines the success of the meeting to a large extent, right? Before we get into our components, I'm gonna put you into breakout groups. I want you to discuss the answers to three questions that I'm gonna share with you. I need to pull up the, the handout. Give me one second. So, you're gonna have 15 minutes to discuss the three questions that you see on your screen now. The, the various stages involved in a meeting, the planning, the arranging, and the managing. What does each of these three tasks involve? What do you think, and I, and I want you to be as detailed as possible in your response to number one. What do you think each of these I'm sorry, what do you think is the most difficult part of each task? Is the planning the most difficult, the arranging or the actual managing? So holding the meeting uh, and the directing of the proceedings. And how tightly does the chairperson need to control the meeting? So what's involved in planning? What's involved in arranging? What's in, involved in managing a meeting? Um, which, is, which of the three is most difficult? And how tightly, what is the chairperson's role in controlling the meeting? How tightly does he or she need to control? All right, so those are the three questions. I'm gonna open breakout rooms 
and I'm going to share this discussion sheet with you via email. We have seven students. I'm gonna put you into two groups, one of three and one of four. And this can be an informal discussion, but I want you to just jot down some of your ideas because when we come back at the end of the 15 minutes, I'm gonna be looking for you to share what you came up with in the meeting. So in room one, Denise, Helga, Jules, welcome back, Felicia, and in room two, Bernique, Natasha, and Tanishka. So you're gonna get an invite to join the meeting. And I'm gonna stop you in 15 minutes. So in 14 minutes, look down at your screen. You should see notification that your meeting is ending in one minute. Mm, okay. Thank you. I thought it was too much. It has the extra. Thank you. Because
Hello. I'm going back in in three minutes. Oh, I'm still recording. Okay, so welcome back. I hope you were able to finish your discussion and I'm eager to hear what you came up with as the key parts of the meeting um, or what each of the key parts involved. So who would like to volunteer what their group discussed? I'll go. Who's that? Felicia. Felicia, okay, let's hear from Felicia. Okay, so we're gonna deal with the first question. What does mm -hmm. each of the three tasks involve? Okay. We came up with the first one, planning. Planning is when you define a goal. One second, please. Okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of background noise. Okay. Now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the first one we did was planning. Um, we plan we setting up we defining a goal and a purpose of the meeting. Yes. How much people will be involved in this meeting? Yes. Uh, agenda. You definitely need an agenda. Yeah. Right. And what is expected? Uh, what is the outcome at the end? Good. So, what should this meeting achieve? Right. Um. So you said we need to decide whether. Tell me the first thing you said again. The first two points. I missed those. The final goal and a purpose. Okay. So a purpose. The purpose needs to be very specific, right? And very clear. Um, we need to first decide whether we even need to have a meeting. I asked Denise that question earlier and she said, I don't think a letter would be as effective. And she's probably right. Sometimes people overlook letters um, and the response is not as immediate. Some people will get the letter today, some people tomorrow, some people day after tomorrow. So you determine whether you need to have a meeting at all. Um, Good. Did any other group, did group two, what group were you in, Felicia? One or two? I think one, yeah, one. One? So did, did group two add anything to Felicia's list, group one's list? Um, she said we need to think about who needs to attend the meeting, how long, we need to think about how long this meeting is gonna last, and mm -hmm. yes, the objective, and how much preparation each participant should do beforehand. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we were doing an assignment and there was a scenario about someone who called a meeting and put together a dance report and sent the report an hour or so before the meeting. And it was something like a 40 page report or, or longer that participants of the meeting were expected to have read and be able to share ideas based on. If your participants need advanced um, preparation, then the timing, the, the, the first call for the meeting should go out in a realistic time period, right? To allow them to prepare for the meeting uh, if there is work that they should do. Good, so planning involves, as Felicia said, we need to decide whether we need to have this meeting at all, how the meeting should be held. Is it gonna be a face-to-face -face meeting or do we conference call? Um, where are we gonna hold this meeting? I don't know if you mentioned that, Felicia, but where is it gonna be? Uh, when is the meeting gonna take place? Who are the people who need to be invited to this meeting? How long is this meeting gonna last? What is the goal or objective that we hope to achieve at the end of this meeting? And then finally, I said, do we want our participants to put, to, to prepare for this meeting as well? Do they need to do some work before coming into this meeting? And if so, we need to plan to give them enough time to do it, to do the work. All right, good. So the second discussion question, what do you think, what is involved in, not discussion question, the second task, what is involved in arranging the meeting? How is arranging different from planning? Well, we came up with just the time factor of arranging a meeting. You're a little muffled, um, Felicia. You came up with the the time factor of arranging a meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all we came up with. What do you mean time factor? Time. 
like how long the meeting would be and what time it would start, what time it would end. Okay. Um, yes, time and place are important. Um, um, well, can I help out a bit? Go ahead. Okay, so well, for instance, I think it was Pranique that was saying um she made plans earlier to leave at four o'clock and then end up calling the meeting at four o'clock. You want to arrange um your meeting so that it's feasible for everybody. You don't want to arrange it late where people are sluggish in the in the evenings yeah. and they can't, they, you know, they can't focus or they have to leave to go pick up kids or a lot yeah. of things going on. You want to do it at a prime time, maybe about 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, right before, I, you know, so. This is worked. Absolutely, Denise. Um, when people are optimized, right? When they're performing at optimum, there's a word that comes to mind when I think about arranging a meeting as far as timing is negotiation. You need to negotiate a time, um, something that works for the majority. Now, with that said, it could be a job in and of itself trying to negotiate a time that works for everyone. Imagine 30 people with 30 different schedules have to attend this meeting. That might be difficult to arrange. Some people want it at two, some people want it on a Friday at 10, some people, but you try to make it um, um, possible for everyone to attend. Now, with that said, Bernique said, was it Bernique? Bernique said, I had planned to go pick up my kids. If there is a competing meeting at that time, then obviously you know, no, this meeting can't take place if there is another meeting going on. But if employees have other things to do, like go pick up kids, or they had planned to go to the doctor at this point, while the organizer of the meeting may, as far as possible, take those things into consideration, employee schedules, and what employees had planned to do, it's not always possible to accommodate things like that, right? Um, and so we understand. And that's why the student that volunteered that experience had no choice but to attend the meeting. Uh, and you're right, Denise, four o'clock is really late in the day. Uh, even as a teacher, having a four o'clock class, more often than not, is a difficult task because uh, students, especially gen ed, writing students fresh out of high school, their brain is trained that school stops at three o'clock. And so at three o'clock, you better believe in most cases that brain has shut off and you kind of have to pull them back into focus. Also having a class right after lunch is difficult because depending on how much they ate, they may feel sluggish, more or less attentive, right? Um, so think about in, as you're arranging the meeting, think about the time, try to negotiate a time that works best for the majority and a time that does not compete with another meeting. You also need to let people know how they prepare, right? Or how they should prepare. Um, if there is work for them to do, they need the materials before the meeting. All of that is involved in the arranging. And then the setting. If it's gonna be in a conference room, you wanna book that conference room. Um, you wanna make sure those kinds of practical things are taken care of. What about managing the meeting? Holding the meeting, what do you need to do? Okay, for holding the meeting, you came up with, um, you have to be strategic. You have to watch your tone. Keep yes. employees engaged. Keep employees, you muffled again. Sorry. Sorry, keep, in, keep employees engaged. Yes. Take notes and minutes. Is the person and, holding the meeting doing that? No. Yeah. No. 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 Yes, there's somebody, there's somebody who will be appointed. So usually a secretary or someone's going to take the minutes. The person leading the meeting can't necessarily lead the meeting and take minutes. That's the recipe for failure. That's a recipe for disaster. Um, unless the meeting is recorded and you go back later and then take minutes. But think about how much work that it involves for that one person. And so generally you delegate, right? Um, Go ahead, Felicia. Okay, yeah. So you're just trying to say we keep it in the, the time frame required, keep employees engaged, have a, a plan, a strategic plan, and take, uh, yeah, I'll take notes and watch the tone. Yes, and provide absolutely. Our, yeah. And provide an ag agenda. Awesome. So you had a good discussion. The agenda comes before the meeting, 
right? right. Um, so people know how to prepare. So that's a part of the arranging, right? The managing of it, the actual in the meeting for an hour, hour and a half involves a lot of people skills, which we're going to talk about. Uh, and a lot of negotiating different personalities and watching out for tone, like you said, uh, we're going to get into that, but excellent. So those three, those three steps, planning, arranging, and managing, we understand that. Um, which of the three do you think is the most difficult? Man I mean, managing, keeping the people engaged, people engaged. The actual meeting. Does anybody right. disagree with Felicia in group one? That is where the most work, it depends on the nature of the meeting too, right? Um, if it is a very uh, detail-oriented, important meeting and you have to gather a lot of data and information leading up to it, the planning or the, the, the arranging, that might be difficult too, right? You have to get these statistics and get this information and liaise with this one and put notes together and put presentations together, that can be difficult. It really depends on the kind of meeting uh, and the purpose of the meeting. All right, um, the final discussion question was, how tightly does the chairperson need to control the meeting? What is the chairperson's role in keeping things well organized and flowing according to plan? And it isn't necessarily a question for Felicia. If you want to answer, you can, but we can, we can, we can hear from somebody else as well. Okay. So my view of it is to, easily, um, to keep prayer, have open discussion. Did you say um, keep prayer? Yeah, have, I'm um, sorry. Oh, P-R-A-Y-E-R? -E -E no, be fair. Oh, fair, okay. Right. Fair. Okay. And the reason I asked, about prayer, because I had the interesting experience of attending a meeting um, at UB. We sometimes serve on faculty boards. And if you are a faculty board member, you are an advisor to another department as they take their courses before Academic Senate to have them approved. So usually courses are restructured and redesigned and they have to be approved before they can be offered, right? So in my department, we long since stopped praying. In fact, some people thought it was offensive that we began our meetings with prayer. And so we did away with that to the point that even, I'd even forgotten that people pray before meetings. And so I go to a faculty board meeting and there I am <laughs> with my snacks and my water. And they say, let's, let's pause for a moment of prayer. And I'm like, wait, what, what? We hadn't done it in like 10 years in my department, but that's just an indication of how different organizations, even within, within the same larger umbrella organization has different procedures, practices, and strategies that work for them, right? Um, you said you want the meeting, the chairperson wants the meeting to be fair. Yeah. Right, I'll right. Open um, allow open discussion oh, wow. people could discuss their thoughts. Yes, mm. now, with that said, open discussion is good. Runaway discussions are bad, right? You, you want the discussion to be on focus and there are different personality types that attend these meetings that you have to be aware of, right? And kind of uh, mitigate for. Okay, excellent. Anybody else has anything to add to question three? Okay, good job, group one. So we're gonna get back to our discussion. Um, Scheduling a meeting, planning, putting it together, managing a meeting can, can involve a lot of work for the planner. That much is clear, right? Um, and as I said before, depending on the nature of the meeting, there may be a lot of work for the people, uh, the participants of the meeting. There are several factors which we're going to look at that impact the productivity and the success of meetings that we hold. So the first one is objectives. The second is the degree of planning. The third is the amount of control that the chairperson exerts or has. And then closure, certain closure steps uh, or closure activities that need to take place. So that's what we're gonna look at now. So the first thing we want to do is set objectives. Um, anytime meeting objectives are not clear to the person 
who is leading the meeting, then they're not going to be clear to the participants. So if you're not quite sure what this meeting is about or who call this, what you call this meeting for, that is going to shine through or show through so clearly in the meeting. What is the tool that you use to establish these objectives and to make sure this meeting is focused and on task at every step? There is one key tool in this planning and Felicia said it, but it bears repeating. What is that tool? And we're gonna look at some examples later. What do you need to make sure the meeting objectives are clear? And we're on. Agenda. You need an agenda. You need an agenda. Prior to the meeting, the agenda is important. And during the meeting is important. It provides information on the meeting's objectives and it identifies the kind of preparation participants should do prior to the meeting. One of the most embarrassing things is to attend a meeting not having reviewed the agenda before the meeting and find oneself on the agenda to give a brief update or report. And you're surprised, like, oops, I'm not prepared, right? And so that's why the agenda is sent up so that people who uh, are expected to participate and contribute are aware of that expectation. And during the meeting, it keeps uh, the meeting objectives clear and ensures that they're followed. Next thing is you need to plan. You've set the objectives in the agenda. So now base your discussion, um, I'm sorry, base your plan on that set objective, right? Um, planning includes, as we said, developing and distributing the agenda, selecting the appropriate participants, reserving the meeting room, considering the requirements, the technology, the space, um, and you also have to do some mental preparation as well, right? As the meeting host, that's gonna give you the advantage. If you gather your meeting notes, any materials that you need before the meeting, or if this is not the first meeting, ensure that minutes of the last meeting are sent to remind participants of the focus of these meetings um, and to give them an opportunity to review, right? Before the meeting. Control is another key element, but that requires, uh, quite a bit of work. This is in the management stage. So the leader of the meeting needs to, to maintain a level of control. Um, in fact, that control needs to be established at the very start of the meeting. You need to lay some ground rules. Um, the roles of the participants need to be defined. So you might hear someone in, an, in a meeting, at the beginning of the meeting, the leader say, okay, to be clear, Adam is going to deliver a 20 minute presentation, then, we will have a 10 minute question and answer session at the end of the presentation. So we ask you to hold your questions and comments until the end. Something simple like that is, is exerting control and letting participants know, don't interrupt the speaker. This presentation is gonna last for 20 minutes. At the end of it, you have 10 minutes for question uh, and answers. That helps you also to keep the discussion focused. Um, Controlling a meeting requires a lot of people's skills. I can't say that enough. Uh, people in the meeting may have their own agendas. Some people may be disgruntled. Um, they may have different personalities which may clash with other people in the meeting uh, and may jeopardize the meeting's objectives. You, when you attend any meeting or hold a meeting will encounter several different kinds of personalities. So there are gonna be several people because different people work in organizations, right? Different personalities make up the organizations. So what are the, the kinds of people you might meet? So there's gonna be the talker, right? That person who's gonna monopolize the conversation and believe that he or she is always right. And as I go through this, I know some of you are gonna be thinking of or having people in your mind, like you're thinking about certain people in your organization and saying, yeah, that one is the talker. Um, then there is a disgruntled employee, that cynical employee, who for some reason or other is not content on the job. They complain a lot. They don't see the value in anything being proposed and they're wondering why they're at this meeting right now, right? Um, there is the narrow-minded, the, the traditionalist, the person who just hates change and they're wondering why the well-established process that seemed to be working so well needs to change. They don't wanna think outside the box and they're resisting any kind of new idea. So there's that delightful employee. And then there's the quiet, reserved employee who has good ideas, 
but is always reluctant to share. And you kind of have to draw it out of that person and get them to talk. And then there is a digressive meeting attendee. The person who always wants to take the discussion off track. You have a set agenda, some objectives, and this person is always meandering off and you kind of have to rein them in and get the discussion back on track. And then the disruptor. That disruptive employee whose phone is gonna go off, even though you ask participants at the beginning of the meeting to put their phones on mute. Um, or he or she will distract the participants in the meeting by having side conversations and asking side questions. Those are the kinds of people that you will have to manage as the person leading the meeting, the kinds of personalities that you will have to navigate. Um, these personality types, are so common and so pervasive that the role of the meeting leader is a predominant one. He or she is perhaps the most important person in this meeting. And the better skills he or she has, the more likely the meeting will be a success. And so what do you need to be a good meeting leader? You need to be knowledgeable in the subject, right? Um, whatever this meeting is called for, you need to have some information and knowledge. Uh, you need to be able to prepare. You have to have the time necessary to prepare for the meeting. You need to be a good discussion leader. So be not a shy, reserved person. If you're leading this meeting, you need a degree of confidence and you need to be a good communicator. You also need to be patient and you need to be tactful. There was a word that Felicia used um, more than once. She said fair. You need to be fair. Um, as you're managing these different personalities and these types, you don't want to offend anyone. And you always want to represent yourself as a professional because remember, everyone who attends this meeting is going to see how you deal with people at the meeting as situations arise. And based on how you deal with those people, you're either going to encourage or you're going to discourage participation from the group. And so you need to be tactful as you take control of the meeting. With that said, though, you are doing exactly that. You're taking control. So don't allow the meeting to get too rowdy, people arguing amongst themselves or arguing with you as the person hosting the meetings, talking amongst themselves. Um, establish clear objectives, stick to the agenda. Uh, if the meeting has been called to, to discuss something controversial, it's very easy to go off, off course right, or to have heated exchanges. Um, be firm, but be respectful as you try to create and maintain an environment wherein everyone at the meeting feels respected and heard and they feel comfortable sharing their ideas, right? And as um, Felicia said, you need to keep people interested. You need to devise ways to maintain your audience's level of engagement so that people aren't bored and you have to minimize interruptions. So when the phones go off and when this one's talking to the next one, you need to devise strategies to deal with that um, and do practical things like advise people, please turn off your, your phones or put your phones on mute um, to minimize this distractions. We know about the practical stuff quite well. Like we know we need to send the agenda. We know we need to um, send minutes. It's the closing that a lot of people neglect to do. Um, and this is where the success or failure of a lot of meetings um, happen. There are three important things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to closing the meeting. Conclusion, the conclusion itself, the action items and the meeting minutes. Um, when you conclude the meeting, no matter how insightful the discussion was, if there is no effective follow-up, the meeting will be pointless. So there are certain things that you need to do. So you need to summarize action items. So what are the next steps and who is responsible for them? What are the expected completion dates? And I'm not saying these are things that only should be in the meeting. These are things that should be verbalized. In the, sorry, not in the meetings. That, in the meeting, I mean, in the meeting minutes, they should be verbalized as well, not exclusively in the meeting minutes. Um, identify items that are incomplete from various, from previous meetings or unfinished business. 
These kinds of action items or action steps ensure that every meeting participant knows what they should do next uh, and where this, the, the, this meeting and the results of this meeting are gonna go. Make sure the minutes are taken and that the minutes include the action item. When you don't follow these steps, um, then what we've done is wasted people's time. Uh, whether the meeting was an hour, an hour and a half, if nothing comes at that meeting, there is no clear plan of action, um, then we have basically had what we call a pointless meeting. Uh, and some final things we need to keep in mind, respect people's time. Felicia said, make sure it starts when it's supposed to start and end when it's supposed to end. Um, usually after an hour, people start to drift off, but sometimes it's not possible to have an hour long meeting. Depending on the agenda, the meeting goes longer than an hour. And we rely on mature adults who understand the purpose of the meeting and the objectives to, to basically discipline themselves and to make sure that they're paying attention. Uh, and then think of the practical things that make people comfortable. So have water, uh, have coffee, make sure the lighting is adequate, the seats in the room are comfortable, make sure the space is adequate when you're reserving the meeting space. And be warm, if you're the person hosting the meeting, be warm, smile. Uh, you want to encourage participating, participation from your, your um, uh, meeting participants. And so you want them to share, so smile, acknowledge their ideas, respond to them, um, and invite everyone at the meeting to have a share, right? So since the agenda is so important and it goes out before the meeting and it helps keep the meeting organized, we are going to look at some sample agendas and then you're gonna have an activity to correct some agendas that are missing key parts. I don't know if we'll be able to get to everything that we have planned to do tonight, but we're gonna make an attempt. We're definitely gonna try. So we know that agendas should be specific. They need to be results oriented. They can either be timed or untimed, but most effective agendas are timed. And so we're gonna look at some examples of time agendas tonight, and they need to be realistic. You can't have a 20 item or 30 item agenda and say the meeting is gonna be an hour long, right? And so the goals that you set and are laid out in the agenda need to be realistic. I wanna share some sample agendas with you. Um, and agendas can be, or can provide varying levels of detail, right? or information. I want to look at some different examples. Uh, if you check the syllabus, you will see that your assignment for tonight is to write an agenda. Uh, I'm gonna give you that assignment tonight and you turn it in before Sunday, uh, as has been our custom. So I want you to look at This sample agenda. It's short. Based on everything that we said about meeting procedures and all of the goals of an agenda, do you think this agenda contains too much or too little information? Uh, I have a question, please. What is AOB, number six? All other business, that's a good uh, question. What is AOB? No, I think this agenda is pretty good. You think so? I mean, I think presentation background. Or maybe, no, it maybe need to be re rearranged. Um, <laughs> present. We're going to look at some agendas that are even more detailed than this. Um, it could be even more detailed. We could have 
um, names of the present, pre presenter. We can have time, right? So that we stick as close as possible to the items, right? On the agenda and the, to the set meeting time. This is not wrong as far as agendas that. go, but an agenda can be even more detailed than this. And for your assignment, I want you to do something more detailed than this, okay. all right? So that's what we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at a, a really defined meeting agenda. And then I'm gonna give you two agendas to correct in your small group. So let me stop this share. And Okay, so first you have a template, right? And then following the template, we have information included. Now you're thinking remarks, what remarks? Additional remarks. Um, this depends on the nature of your meeting, the, the level of detail required. I want you to look at this template. And this is a timed agenda. And for teaching purposes and for the purpose of your assignment, I want you to write a timed agenda. Now, while I remember, and I'm gonna send an email to this effect, the agenda that you turn in, as I said, will be timed, but it doesn't have to include the meeting minutes. I thought about it and I thought, wait, that's way too much work for five points. So I just want you to write an agenda and not necessarily the meeting minutes. Because when I was planning this course, I thought, oh, we'll host a meeting and but we don't have time to host an actual meeting, not tonight. Uh, and then we move into resumes and cover letters the next class. And then we begin our presentations. So time is winding down. So I'm eliminating that assignment, um, at least that part of the assignment, the meeting minutes, although we will look at some meeting minutes tonight. So what does this look like in practice? What does this, um, this template look like filled out? So we fill in information related to the meeting, who's holding the meeting, when, where. And then we have some detail. The goals of the meeting are set. And then agenda item one. And then that's time and the purpose and who's leading that part of the meeting. And these are the additional comments. And then we have agenda item two, and that's time and the purpose and who is leading it. Now, I know when you get um, agendas at your job, if you even get meeting agendas before the meeting, it's probably not the structure, but this is the structure that I want you to follow for this assignment. And then we end there. Right? So this is a sales um, team meeting. And the purpose of this meeting is to revise, so to review some advertising campaigns from last year to identify reasons for slumps in sales and to strategize ways to increase sales. I like this example. I like to use this sales example. I've used it several times. Uh, and now we have an actual meeting based on that scenario, following a particular agenda, right? The key thing to take away from this is your agenda needs to be detailed and the timing is a good strategy because it provides definite parameters within um, this meeting. And if you have multiple people contributing to a meeting, they need very specific guidelines on how long they expected to speak and the level of detail. Because if I were to just say, review advertising campaigns from last year and the leader is Adam Butler and that is it. Adam can get up and in five minutes 
do a very brief review, but it's more helpful as the person leading the meeting for me to tell Adam exactly what he is expected to contribute to this meeting so that Adam knows how to prepare and he knows how much time he has. And the same is true for Jody Hanna and the same is true for Jody Hanna, right? Who has the biggest job, right? Probably the person calling this meeting, right? Um, and then we have clear action steps at the end of the meeting and we know where this meeting should go what are the objectives, right? Does that make sense to you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. it does. All right, so now I'm gonna show you two meeting agendas that are not so detailed. I want you to think about the best order of events on this agenda as well. For those of you who will be assigned to correct this, think about whether the order of events makes the most sense. And then there is, let me stop this share. The second, the second agenda, which is perhaps more traditional, right? Something we've definitely seen, or at least this format that we've seen before. It's also time, but how would you correct these two agendas? And this is not something I expect you to work on alone. I'm going to, and here where you see absent, um, that's not an error, right? Um, that information is not available. So let me, so it's not necessarily in there. Okay. So I'm gonna put you back into small groups and I'm gonna give you 20 minutes to correct those two meeting agenda. Now, I want you to take notes. You don't necessarily have to type up anything, but as I, I pull the document up on screen, those people who worked in the group should tell me what they did to correct the various parts of the agenda. So I need to send them to you again, uh, email them to you, and then I'm gonna put you into small groups. Your meeting um, went over time a little bit because after I put you in groups, it was a little bit challenging to um, um, send the document to you. So let me send the document to you first the two documents, and then I'm gonna put you into groups. Okay, so I'm gonna create different breakout rooms. Denise, Edrica, Felicia, Natasha, you're assigned to, let me show you, the sales agenda meeting. Trying to pull it up on screen. Okay. 
the sales team meeting. So this is your assignment. Can you see it? The one in which I told you. Um, all right. Um, Helga, Jules, and Tanishka, you're assigned to the second meeting. Let me share it with you. This one with the time slot. Okay? I, I'm clarifying this because you each got two, two agendas. So you have 20 minutes to correct them. At 7.40 now, I'm gonna open the rooms and I'm gonna stop you at eight o'clock and then we'll review your responses. And I want to discuss um, the presentations with you before we go. We'll have to look at the minutes of meetings next class. I think we'll be close to maybe 8.30 um, or beyond 8.30 by the time we've had the discussion and discuss the um, presentation. So I'm opening the rooms now. Okay, go ahead for me, please. Sorry. Oh, okay, so first things first things first, we removed etc. Yes. And we give our meeting a topic. The topic is achieving company's target for next quarter. Yes. Our business is by and that is a goal, right? So when you yes. say topic, you mean a goal. goal. Good. You establish That's our goal. goal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our business is banking. So that's where the topic um, fits in. Okay, great. We, we added a date of yes. today's meeting, which is October 27, 2021. Yes. We gave a time of how long the meeting will be, which mm -hmm. is 11 a.m. to 12, 15 p.m. Mm -hmm. And we also gave a location, which is the reception boardroom. Yes. And then we went on to point number one, which is standing items. Mm -hmm. And we gave a time slot for standing items, which was 11 a.m. to 11, 15 a.m. Yes. The attendance was taken by the secretary. So you the named the per persons performing various roles? Yes. Okay, good. And then for approving prior meeting, prior meeting minutes, we gave that task to the loan sales team manager and for the well, team. you that didn't have to be assigned right because this is this is taken by a vote you you make a motion to okay, the okay. Minute. so that didn't necessarily have to be assigned okay okay far enough <laughs> so someone raises their hand and then you say i move that the, the minutes be approved and then the motion becomes a resolution go ahead Understood. Okay. And then for the team status updates, we assigned someone for that as well, which mm -hmm. is the manager. Okay, good. And then we moved on to point number two, and we gave a time slot for that as well, which is 11.15 mm -hmm. to 11.25 a.m. Do you think new business should be number two? What should come first? What do you do before you get into new business? Housekeeping, housekeeping. No. You think so? Housekeeping, really? Housekeeping. No, this comes at the end of the meeting. So that's the end. You, you, you kind of do anything from the last meeting, right? Last meeting's business, topics that were not completed in the previous meeting or action items that are due. Then you could move on to new business. Okay. New topics for this week's meeting. So- Could you repeat that please, sorry? It would make sense if we're doing this meeting in a logical order, mm -hmm. you review. And, and I put these little descriptions here so that you know what each phase of the meeting would be dedicated to. Right. So the fourth point, last meeting's business, is dedicated to discussing topics that were not completed in a previous meeting or action items that are due. So that's what we should have started off with? That's the first thing. Well, okay. you started with the standing items. So that, okay, okay, so number four would be number two. Yes, and okay. then number two, then you move on to new business. After right. you, you, you kind of talked about old business, you get to new business. Okay. Okay. 
Right. And then housekeeping comes at the end. All right. So review any action items for the next meeting, um, anything outstanding. And then who's responsible for those action items and a proposed timeline for completion. All right? Yes. Okay. Good. Any other corrections you made? Um, no, that was that okay. was that was it. That's all we made. Okay. Made. So who was in group one? That uh, was Denise, Felicia, I think, um, Edrica, and Taniska. Okay. Natasha. Good Let, job, oh, Natasha. Ladies. Good job. So we made these corrections. Excellent. Now let's look at the second one. The, the, the key thing is a logical order needs to be established, or logical order proceedings. And so it's kind of out of order now. And it would be good to turn this into a timed agenda. We have different people contributing. And so we want to give them clear guidelines and parameters so that our meeting, our hour long meeting doesn't turn into a three hour meeting, all right? Okay, so let's look at the second agenda, which is this one. So this is Helga. And who else was in your group, Helga? I was sorry, I was muted. It's me, it's Tanishka, it's Jules. And then we got um, I think was that was that pre um Renique? Renique? Or Adrika. Someone came in, I know. Someone came in and I assigned them to room two. Yeah, I okay, didn't, great. I didn't see the name, but it was that's that's fine. what corrections did you make to this? This one seemed to be a little bit more vague, right? Mm -hmm. And needed some more work. Yeah. But first of all, the name of the company, we don't have a name of a company. Mm -hmm. We don't have the location of the company. Um, and well, we didn't need that location. That we need to know where the meeting was going to be. You mean the, the location, location of the meeting? Meeting, correct. Mm -hmm. The date and the time that says 9 30 10 doesn't correspond with what, what was listed at the bottom. You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the dates and time are totally off. Mm -hmm. uh, on the attendees, um, if the attendees are not all listed there because the minutes are supposed to be done by Alicia, but the attendees listed here doesn't have Alicia's name in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The proper names and the titles of each attendee is missing, I guess you could say. We don't necessarily need titles. Yeah. No, not necessarily. We need people's proper names. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. But we figured since it's an executive meeting, we would, we would think to list it. But... Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the, it is that it, is lacking a purpose. The meeting is, is just. You need a goal. It, it doesn't have a goal. Um, it doesn't state who is going to be the the meeting, the team leader at the meeting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't state. Um, it just has budget. It doesn't say budget for for what for what time period. Time of year. Right. So we need more precise and specific agenda items, definitely. Yeah. And we need these proper names here as well. The okay. times could be, there's some, some um, practical things wrong with it. Yeah. And in terms of content, we need more information, right? right? So budget is repeated twice. What's the difference between the budget that we see from 7.30 to 7.40 right. and then the hour long budget Right? right, um, and this upcoming trip, so we need more details, right? Now, we weren't sure we were supposed to fill in the details, or we we're just supposed to discuss it. Now, we didn't. Well, uh, you will have to do an agenda for homework. So, the fact that you were able to identify what is wrong with this right. and what needed to be corrected is a step in the right direction. So, if you didn't fill in, then that's fine, great. Right. Um, anything else you noted? Um, the absent part. It doesn't state who who's absent or whatever, but we noticed that Felicia's name is missing out. If Felicia was absent, there's not a quote unquote backup person or to record the minutes. So we saw here. I don't know if that's relevant. Right. So that was an, an, an oversight. Um it's Alicia, not Felicia. Alicia is Alicia. missing. Yeah, Alicia, yes. All right, good. Excellent. So we were supposed to get to meeting minutes. Um, that's when you have who's absent, 
um, who didn't attend the previous meeting, who was in attendance, that's when you have that information included. We unfortunately did not have enough time to get to meeting minutes tonight. So we're gonna have to pick that up next week. And once we've done um, the components of the meeting minutes and looked at some sample minutes, then we're gonna talk about preparing employment, um, a, a, an employment portfolio. So resume, cover letter, that kind of thing. What I wanna spend the next 10 to 15 minutes discussing is your assignment. If you look at the syllabus, and I'm gonna pull up a copy of the syllabus. Oh, goodness. I'm just waiting for it to download. There we go. I'm gonna share my screen with you. So at the very bottom, you have your video and communication, um, video and context assignments. And there are five of them. Now I need to speak with the members of group four because I sent an email for clarity, but I wanna make sure we're all on the same page. So. If you're not ready to talk to me tonight, that's fine. I, you need to speak with each other to nail down what you're gonna do and then talk to me. So if you need to do that, that's fine. But bear in mind that presentations start on November 17th. So in two weeks, we're gonna have our first two presentations and, pre and presentations conclude on November 24th. Please remember to email me your videos before class. So ideally, I'm looking to have them by Tuesday so that I can view them and make sure I'm able to play them for the class. And then as a class, we'll give you some feedback uh, and on the video, right? So I want you to make sure those, um, those practicalities are taken care of. Send the video to me at least by Tuesday before your, your presentation date. I pay attention to the dates you've, you've been assigned. We have four groups um, and you all know which group you're assigned to. So these are the assignments, but different assignments require different things from the presenters. So in general, you are re required or expected to demonstrate that you are communicating effectively. Um, based on the strategies that we've learned for communicating bad news, for being persuasive. Um, we're gonna learn interview techniques and interview strategies next class. And so depending on the assignment that you've been given, you should demonstrate an understanding of those techniques in the video that you submit. So I put together uh, an explanation, some guidelines, which should clarify what each group is expected to demonstrate in that presentation. You have um, the timeline given, but how is your grade going to be achieved? Now, one of the key things I want you to keep in mind is if there are two of you in a group or three of you in a group, each person has to be involved. Each person has to be doing something demonstrable, something that I see so that I can give you a grade. You're gonna be graded individually for this assignment. And so if you sit silently during the video, I have nothing to grade really. So each person has to have an equal share and each person has to be involved. What will you be evaluated on? Content clarity and organization. That is 10 points. This assignment is worth 15. So the weightiest part of the assignment is on how you demonstrate understanding of the assignment and fulfill the requirements. And then the second part, delivery five points. Um, so what does it mean, content clarity and organization? You wanna demonstrate that you are handling all elements of the assigned task professionally, 
The information needs to be presented logically and the video also has to be engaging and has to be easy for your audience to follow. Um, effective communication strategies need to be employed at each stage. So what are those strategies? And I get into some more explanation of those strategies um, below. You need to understand the goal of the assignment and make sure you're meeting those objectives. So if you are mediating conflict, what strategies are you using to create a positive and professional atmosphere? To show respect, um, the tone needs to be appropriate. It can be offensive and harsh and the conflict needs to be resolved. So people involved in this video, whether it's two of you or three of you need to demonstrate respect for each other and effective communication so that the issue is resolved and people feel satisfied by the outcome at the end. If you are communicating bad news, then based on what we've learned, you wanna follow the conventions of bad news. So you need a buffer. You need to not include misleading information. You need a clear sound rationale for the bad news. All of the conventions of a bad news communication should be followed. If you're trying to persuade the employee, then you need persuasive strategies. Um, you can't be pushy or aggressive. Um, you need to be aware of the employee skills and competencies and be very specific in addressing them. You need to provide a clear rationale. Excuse me, one second, please. Sorry. Um, if you're trying to persuade the employee, then you need to use the appropriate strategies. Um, now, one group is, is handling a communication like this, where the employee wants to leave and is being persuaded to stay. Whether the employee leaves or, or goes is up to the group. But if the outcome is negative, then of course you're expected to demonstrate understanding of the conventions of, of negative news communication, right? Uh, if it is a job interview, one group is assigned a job interview, then you need to demonstrate appropriate interview techniques. Your roles need to be clearly defined. I need to see who's the interviewer and who's the interviewee. Um, the duties and responsibilities of the job the person is applying for should be clearly defined. Uh, it needs to be professional in terms of dress and deportment, how you carry yourself, both the interviewer and the interviewee, and appropriate questions need to be asked from both parties, the interviewer and the interviewee. This part of it we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, we'll get to next week, um, interview techniques. And then of course, there's delivery for five points. So maintain eye contact, make sure people can hear you in the video. Um, Avoid pronunciation and grammar errors as far as possible. It needs to be professional and in every possible way and virtually free of grammar and mechanical errors, right? Um, and in a format that we can actually view or follow. So I said to you, the best thing might be to just take a video with your phone. Um, you don't have to be too fancy and get videographer and all that stuff, no. And I'm not sure about TikTok, how that works. I don't even know. So. My advice to you would be just use your phone. Either um, you try to record it yourself or have someone record you and your partner. Okay? Any questions about what you, what you should be doing for this assignment? I'm gonna send this sheet to you and I want you to review it with your group members. You can ask me questions now or after you've had the opportunity to review it, you can ask me questions then. But as, we, as you're preparing for it, I want you to have a clearer idea of what I'm looking for. Does this video have to be a particular length, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Right, it says in the, um, the syllabus, let's go back to that. I, I, I'm looking it up because I don't want to give you the wrong information. I know that I do specify a late though.
So where do you find your assignments? At the very bottom. Um, and it says a 10 minute video. So you'll be placed in groups of two. We have one instance of a group of three because of the numbers and your video should be 10 minutes. Each member has to be actively engaged. Um, and then you look below to see which number you are assigned and based on that number, which assignment you were given. Now, I, I said it to you, it doesn't say it here, but I'm gonna remind you, you're sending this to me the Tuesday before your presentation so that I can review it and make sure I'm able to share it with the class, okay? And these are the assignments once again. All right, now this involves some meeting with your group member. Now at the beginning of the semester, we took a vote about um, students degree of comfort with meeting and um, coming together to complete this assignment. I did mention that if you are looking for a space to put your video, to film your video, this office is open on Saturdays until one and you can use that space, okay? Um, any other questions for me? Can I provide clarity on anything else? Just let me know. I see we have 15 chat messages. What's happening? Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, if there are no questions, have a good meeting. I will see you and bear in mind that the chat is saved. So keep that in mind as you're sharing your comments. Okay. All right. <laughs> have a good, have a good, have a good evening. Okay. Tanishka, you have a question?